Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Daily Dose, where today we're gonna to be talking about grace over regret. My name is Maddie Elliott, and I am one of the ministers here at Calvary. It's so good that you could join us today. Well, I am back from a few months of maternity leave. I had my little baby Pax just three months ago, and he's so sweet, and we we're so excited to welcome him. And, you know, if you're someone who has been pregnant before, you, you might have experienced this too. But while I was pregnant, I had some cravings. And one of my cravings that I had was McDonald's Fountain Coke. Okay, McDonald's Fountain Coke. And I've heard this story about McDonald's Fountain Coke that they have like a secret recipe. And that's why McDonald's Fountain Coke tastes better. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I think it is because I craved specifically McDonald's Fountain Coke. And you can imagine after 10 months or so of craving and drinking a lot of McDonald's Fountain Coke that I have developed a bit of a sweet tooth. And now that I am post baby, I'm, I'm trying to watch what I eat a little bit and think about all the things that I am putting into my body. And yet I still have these cravings for sugar and sweet things, right? And so I have been trying to cut back on my sweets and I, you know, I see a donut and I'm like, oh, I should only eat half of that donut. And I take that donut and I eat the whole thing. Or I plan my dinner and I plan a salad, something delicious, something healthy. And instead, I end up ordering the greasiest takeout food of all time. Maybe you're someone who can relate to that. Uh, maybe you've experienced that too. And after I have experienced these things, after I've eaten the other half of that donut, or after I've eaten that greasy food, almost immediately afterward, I'm full of regret. Why? I planned, I planned, I planned. I planned to only eat half the donut. I planned to eat a healthy dinner. And yet, I still eat the thing I'm not supposed to eat, right? I still eat the extra sweet stuff. I still eat the extra greasy things. So why didn't I choose the healthier option? But you see, we are people prone to choosing things that are not good for us, right? We're prone to making mistakes. And because we're consumed with what we want now, versus what we want most. So we mess up. We choose the wrong thing. My dad passed away this winter. He was battling with early onset of dementia, and I felt so blessed uh, that he was able to live nearby me in an excellent care facility. And I was able to call him every day as well as see him once or twice a week. And a few months before he passed, there was one week where he had called me to come over every day that week. Every day that week. And once it was just for a regular visit to catch up. Once it was because he needed some new slippers. Once it was I needed to deliver some groceries due to COVID. The, the groceries weren't in the right situation. And once it was because the TV wasn't working quite right. Well, towards the end of the week, I was feeling exhausted. I was pregnant and I was trying to get my work organized so that I could go on leave. And I get yet another call from my dad. I get another call from him and he wanted me to come over and move some stuff around the room. And I remember feeling so annoyed and so fatigued as I changed from my sweatpants back into my maternity jeans. And I rolled up to his place and I barged in and I asked, what is it that he'd like me to move around? And because dementia is such an evil disease, he had a hard time explaining to me what he wanted. And ultimately he lost his train of thought. And I sighed a big sigh and I sat him back down on his couch, gave him a hug and I said, I'd see him next week. And after he passed, I thought about that day with so much regret. Why hadn't I chosen a different attitude? Why had I rushed back home? Why couldn't I see that maybe it wasn't about moving furniture around at all? Maybe he needed to be spending some time with me. Here's the truth. Everyone in life is going to have these moments of regret. We all make our choices that we look back on with some pain in our hearts or disgust at ourselves. But here's some more truth. The regret doesn't have to be the end of the story. 
The Apostle Paul in the New Testament writes something so relatable. This is what he writes in Romans. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. For me, it's so comforting to see Paul write this because here's the guy that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, right? He's a real faithful guy. He's a guy who has experienced the risen Christ firsthand, and he struggles with the same things I do. We will never lead lives of perfect decisions. We will never lead lives where we only make great choices. We will experience times of regret where we will wish we would have done things differently or wish things would have just panned out differently. And here's the thing, regret is key. It helps us identify things we could do differently. It can help us become better, more faithful people. And at the same time, it's painful. And when we land there and choose to stay, It's debilitating. But we don't need to land and remain within the pain of regret. Who frees us from this pain of the circle of sin? Who frees us from regret? The answer is Jesus. Jesus gives us God's grace. Jesus gives us grace for our sins, our mistakes, our poor choices. And we can use grace as a lens for ourselves as well. When we face these moments of regret, we can sit with them, we can learn from them, and we can use grace to move forward and hopefully make wiser, better, life-giving choices. God's grace doesn't just help us move through our mistakes, but it also helps us to lead lives full of better choices. Just ask people recovering from substance abuse. When you ask the question, how are you able to keep from using You might just hear the response, it is from the grace of God. God's grace that is extended to us helps us to make better choices. God's grace helps us to not live in regret. We too can choose grace over regret. We can use the strength given through God's grace to forgive the unforgivable, to love the unlovable, and maybe to eat only half of the donut. But when we do eat the whole donut, we know that we have God's grace too. Thanks for joining us for the Daily Dose today. We're so glad that you could hop on and be with us. If you're watching on Facebook, go ahead and share this video. Give it a like. If you're watching on YouTube, you can hit that little subscribe bell. And if you're watching at home on cable access, make sure to invite a friend with you tomorrow and next week. We're so glad that you could join us this week. Everyone, have a good night.
Unleash your kingdom's power, reaching the near and far. No force of hell can stop your beauty changing heart. You made us for much more than this. Awake the kingdom seed in us, fill us with the strength and love of Christ. We are the church. Change the atmosphere. 